So today, my topic is what really matters. And you know, what a perfect time to explore this idea. Because as you look at life, our lives are disrupted. Some of us not so bad, some of us very bad. Some of us are without work. Some of us are fighting systemic racism. Some of us are ill. Some of us are in fear. Fear for things that we can't even imagine. And there's a collective fear all around us. And so we're questioning everything. And we're asking ourselves, well, what really matters? Does it matter that I'm not doing church in person? Does it matter that I, I can't be out at a restaurant? Does it matter that I haven't seen my granddaughter in four months? The question you got to go back to every time is, what really matters? So I'm going to bring in some Ernest Holmes because Ernest is one of my favorite teachers in the world. And Ernest said this. He said, the thing that really matters is that while you are alive in this world, you should be 100% alive, filled with joy and enthusiasm, filled with energy and power. Did you hear that? That while you're in your physical body, you should be giving 100% to being alive, to have enthusiasm for everything that you do, and be filled with the natural energy and powers within you. You know, this happens for me every time I go to this little boutique gym that I go to. It's Fit 2-20. And it's uh, owned and run by one of our community members, Forrest. And when you go there, you're doing five exercises. That's it. Five exercises. You're doing five reps per five exercises. You're doing 25 total reps. And there's a computer and it's monitoring you. But here's the key thing. For that 20 minutes, for those 25 reps, you are to give 100% of everything you've got. 100%. And when you're done with that, with that 20 minutes, your body is spent. Now, I thought about that. And here's the interesting thing. When I would go to the gym prior to doing this type of workout, I would do bench press with dumbbells. And I would do 15 reps. I would do three sets. I would do 45 reps just on, my, on the dumbbell bench press. That's it. That's not including the flies, that's not including my shoulders, my arms, nothing else. 45 reps, but I never maxed out. And if you understand physiology, you understand that until you max out your muscles, they don't grow. So can you take the same principle and apply it to anything in life? And I would tell you the answer is yes. You can apply it to your career. If you're giving 50% effort to your career, are you fully 100% engaged with life? Not really. If you're not committed totally to the relationships in your life, are you 100% committed to life? Are you walking around filled with joy and enthusiasm if you're not 100% committed to life? Do you feel your energy and power? if you're not 100% committed to life. Here's what I know, is that as a minister, doing what I do is completely different. And so what I know is, in order to be committed to life, I'm not focusing on the past. I'm not focusing on that we did live services here, we had live classes there. For me to go backwards, that takes away my 100% in the now. And if I start worrying about the future, what's it going to be like? When am I going to be able to bring back this to be live performances in person and that? I'm taking my energy out now. So I committed to myself that while I'm doing this, this Facebook Live and this YouTube video, and I'm doing my guided meditations, I'm doing my community gatherings, I'm doing my Facebook Lives each and every day, I'm 100% there. I am living as if this is the natural state. Because... In doing so, I sleep well at night. I'm not frustrated. Now, don't think there are not times I get frustrated. I am human. And my ego would love for it to go back. But I also know it's never going to be the same. It's going to be different. What's it going to look like? I don't know. 
but I'm open to new ideas. I'm open to new possibilities. Ernest Hose goes on later in the same book that I was looking at. He says, the trouble is not that the mind grows old, but we let it slow down. And he's referring to is that the mind growing old means that the mind stops creating. It starts coming, stops coming up with new thoughts and realize the only reason we're here is to create. And if we're not using that creative power, our mind slows down. What happens when we slow down? We get into a ritual. We get into a habit. And when we get locked into a habit, guess what happens? We start living our life over and over and over again. It's Groundhog Day. It's deja vu all over, all the time. You see, we are creative. And that is our only purpose for living. We can consciously choose what to experience in this life, or we can let the law of averages create our lives for us. If you've not heard me use that term before, the law of averages means this. You have a mental atmosphere. That mental atmosphere that you are, which is the sum total of all your thinking, conscious and conscious, either attracts to you or repels from you. Now, you can create that atmosphere by how you think, what you feel, how you act, and what you speak. And the more you shift that mental atmosphere, the different your experience is. But if you're not doing that consciously, you're surrounded by an atmosphere that's created by the people you live with, created by the television you watch, created by the internet, the YouTube, what, Facebook. It's created by the religion that you're a part of. It's created by the politics. It's created by the, where, the businesses that are surrounding you. That atmosphere is around you. And if you're not conscious it will start to create and become your atmosphere and you're going to have an experience which is average. That means that if 33% uh, of the people in the world are, are receiving cancer and having that challenge, you could be one of those 33%. The key thing is when you're conscious, you can be the person that doesn't get it. And you say, well, Lee, that's not possible. I said, yes, it is. Well, they say, you got your DNA. And I said, well, DNA is proven. It's a tendency. Because if you look at my DNA, what's the first thing the doctor does when you go to see him? He says, write down your family history. So what's my family history? My father had blood pressure, high cholesterol, high triglycerides, congestive heart failure. That was my dad. My mother had cancer, died of breast cancer. My brother was on medication for uh, depression, and also my brother died of prostate cancer. Now that's my DNA, that's my blood DNA, and yet, when I go to the doctor and I get my blood work out, I've got none of those symptoms. Why? Because I've been working on this for 25 years. I didn't start right away, but I've been working on my health for 25 years, the way I eat the way I think, the way I speak, the way I act. Everything I do is about living and breathing in a healthy body. And here's the thing. In order to do that, you've got to have a big why. And my why is I want to fully experience this life. I want to create every day and I want to be able to function within it. When COVID-19 is over, the first thing I'm going to do is Naranjan and I are going to hop on a plane and we're going to go into the Himalayas and do the hike we've talked about. And I will be capable of doing that as well as any 25-year-old male athlete. I've set the intention. I am consciously creating my experience. You see, to be above the law of averages, we must use our meditation to create a life that we cannot wait to get up to and experience every day. I can't wait to get up and meditate. I can't wait to do my Facebook Lives. I can't wait to go to the gym. I can't wait to cook nutritious food. I can't wait to counsel. I can't wait to see what else can I do to connect with people so that they can learn how to better self-love. I can't wait to do that. I can't wait to spend time with my son Steve and taking a walk and doing the banter that we do back and forth and how we explore life. I can't wait to spend time with my beautiful wife. I can't wait to see my granddaughter on um, Facebook, not Facebook Live, but let's say on a live video on Echo Dot 
and interact with Claire. I can't wait to do that. I can't wait for people to tell me their stories, how they've applied these principles and they have changed their life. That fills my heart. So to be above the law of averages, we've got to use our imagination. What have you imagined recently? How big can you imagine? You see, one of the other things is not only to use our imagination, but to be above the law of averages, we must learn to be flexible as life around us is constantly changing. If the times right now are not giving you that message, you've just not been aware. So I want to wake you up. Knock, knock, knock. Wake up. Flexibility is the key. The trees that are flexible survive the hurricane. The trees that are inflexible snap and break in two. And so one of the things you can rest assured, and I'm sure you've heard this before, the only thing that we know is constant is change. Every moment of every day, our body becomes a new body. Every moment of every day, a new thought can enter our mind and can change the, tra the trajectory of our lives forever. So we've got to learn to be flexible and to accept that flexibility is the natural way. It's just how it is, folks. The universe does not want to be the same. The universe is always about becoming more. Our role is also to fearlessly, fearlessly hold on to our life image and live it regardless of what is happening to us. So we build this image, we use our creativity, we use our imagination, we're flexible as how we deal with life, and then we hold fearlessly onto that image with our thoughts, words, actions, and feelings. And we don't let people around us, events around us, shift us from that image. Because if we don't hold that image, what comes in? That creepy little bugger comes in. What is that bugger? The law of averages. It'll sneak in there and you won't even know it sneaks in. If you're starting to feel depressed, if you're feeling negative emotions, what that's telling you is that you're not focused on what you want. You're focused on what the law of average is giving and it's taking you away from where you want to put your emphasis in life. Our role is not to see ourselves getting through life, but rather we must learn to enjoy and appreciate the eternal here and now. This is the only moment we have right now. Be it, enjoy it to its fullest. I look at my wife and I love my wife more than any person in the world. She's my dearest confidant. And I know that every moment I have with her is precious because at some point, one of us will leave this planet before the other, and we will not be together. So while I'm with Jean, I appreciate every moment I have with her. The same thing with my sons, Stephen and Matthew and Robert. The same thing with my granddaughter, Claire. The same things with my friends. When I'm with them, I appreciate every moment. I appreciate everything about them. And in doing so, I get to experience the greatness of life with them in that moment. When I'm not with them, I'm right there where I am, with, with whatever I'm with. You see, the more you express, the more life will flow through you and express in greater ways that you've ever imagined. You see, when you express more life, life says yes, and it gives you more. That's the key thing. What you put out, you give back. If you're putting out a little, you're getting a little back. If you're putting out a really clear image, you're really getting a clear life back. So what you express through your thoughts, words, actions, and feelings, it comes back to you. So by God, definitely put some feeling behind what you want. Don't be a, a well, I hope I'm abundant. No, no, you're abundant. Abundance is showing up every day in your life with every breath that you breathe. Know that you're abundant. The key thing here, St. Augustine said, the greatest prayer that you can ever pray is a prayer of gratitude. Because when you, when you express gratitude, you open up the door to receiving more than you can ever even imagine. So what is it you really want? If you're not clear, 
ask the question and be fully present on the journey. Say, my journey right now is discovery. I'm going to discover who I am, who I desire to be. I'm going to recreate myself. Nothing better. There's no greater challenge in the world than the ability to say, I'm recreating myself. I'm doing it right now as I speak with you. I'm recreating Lee Wallach as, as I am. So if you've not seen me in person for four months, when you see me in person next time, you're going to feel that my energy is different than it ever was because I've been working hard on recreating this being, this light being that you're watching right here now. And here's what I know. As we become these light beings, as we specify and we fine tune and we become them, we can bring our light together. And as we bring our light together, we can change the world. Join me. Connect with me and everyone else on the planet that sees a world better than this, a world that works for everyone. I want to thank you for joining us today. I'm so grateful that you took your time to watch or listen to this message. If you found this message beneficial, I would ask that you go to our website, agapecsl.com. Once there, click on the Donate button and experience the joy of conscious and purposeful giving. Or if you would like, text your gift by simply dialing 972-532-6976. It is through your gifts that we are able to bring this message to you in the world. I would ask that if you like this message, to please subscribe to my YouTube channel under my name, Lee Wallach. Again, I want to thank you for joining me in the Gopi community as we learn how to better self-love through conscious living.